Next story I wanted to talk about is about Andrew Womack. I want to reintroduce you to who he is. So let's take a look at this clip. I've covered this before. It's about mildew. If you've been watching me for a while, you'll probably remember it. Check this out. February 2nd, 2021. You know, real quickly, we need to take questions, but real quickly, when my wife and I first got married, we were poor and we lived in a house that wasn't insulated. And so we had a gas heater on the inside to keep the place warm, but because there was no insulation, the walls sweat. And in the uh, closets, especially where it was dark. Okay, I I'm a little bit skeptical at the moment that he was ever poor, quote unquote. A lot of people try to play up that angle, like big famous comedians and televangelists and stuff because they feel like it, it gives them the ability to relate to their audience more closely and they can kind of weasel their way into their pockets easier basically uh, but you know what let's grant it let's grant it say he's poor keep listening closets especially where it was dark and stuff like this we just had mildew everywhere and you know what I did? Instead of taking something and cleaning it off and repainting or something, I took Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read it. Mildew, you are a curse. Then I turned over to Galatians 3.13. I'm redeemed from you. And I spoke to mildew and cursed it. And did you know it went away without me having to clean it and do something? It was a curse. And I rebuked the curse. And I got free from that. This dude is telling us he prayed away mildew. He opened his Bible and prayed to God that mildew would disappear, and he's claiming that it worked. Isn't that interesting? Well, I'll tell you what, that's all it would take to make me a believer. All you have to do is perform a miracle like that right in front of me and give me the opportunity to investigate and verify that that is in fact what happened. That's all you gotta do. Show me a hard example that's irrefutable. And I'm a believer, man. You just turned, you converted me to Jesus just now. That's what you did. That's all you have to do to convert me. It will take a miracle that you can prove was a result of your prayer to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, irrefutably, answered your prayer in a real tangible way that's verifiable. Isn't it interesting that none of these things are ever real and verifiable and in person? or on camera. Isn't it interesting how we can never prove direct causation between the two? If Jesus is in your life so much that he's willing to eliminate mildew for you if you pray for it, this should be as simple as calling me on the phone, telling me that you're about to pray for somebody's limb to be regrown or something, and then just watching it happen right in front of you. Should be that simple, right? Why don't they ever do that? If you were unfamiliar with Andrew Womack, let me give you a little bit more background on some of his beliefs. This one was from mid-November 2020, immediately after the election. So Donald Trump had just lost, and it was verified by this point. If you weren't, like, paying attention to the election at the time, I remember what happened. It, it took a while. Like, we didn't know who was going to win for a while. Like, a few days at least, maybe even a week. I don't think Biden declared victory for a while, but eventually it came to the point where Trump simply didn't have the votes necessary to win. That's just what it was. So Biden came out and declared victory eventually. So this is mid-November when this clip came out. This was the point at which we realized that Biden won unequivocally. That's just what it was. But it was kind of before the Republican narrative had been set about election fraud and all that stuff. So listen to what Andrew Womack has to say on the subject of the election right after Biden wins. I heard a leader in the body of Christ say that God sovereignly puts in the president. And so if, if Biden winds up being the one, then God is the one who put him in. And man, I just hate that. I disagree with that 1,000%. Is that because you had just heard that Biden won? Is that why? I would be willing to bet that if Trump had won the election, you would be saying that too. And let me just give you one scripture that if you believe the Bible, it disproves that. And that's Hosea chapter 8, verse 4, and it says, And they have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. I mean, right there, the Lord just clearly says that I wasn't a part of you putting this king in. I'm not. Well, that was a narrative. That was part of a story that was being told at that time. That's not describing how the future was going to be. A lot of televangelists like Hank Kuhneman, Johnny Enlow, Kenneth Copeland, and a lot of others believe that God has 
his hands directly in what is happening in the United States right now in the U.S. government. If you pray for a political leader to win an election, God will make sure that his guy gets in. That's what they believe, and they've said as much. What you just quoted was a cherry-picked verse from a narrative, like from a story that was being told in the Bible, past tense, not present tense or future tense. Sounds like a justification or a post hoc explanation for what happened. Sounds like an explanation for why Biden won when you were hoping and praying that Trump would win. You putting this king in, I'm not the one who put that prince there. God doesn't put people in who are gonna kill and expand the killing of babies by the millions, even babies that have been born alive. He's not the one putting in people that are pushing the LGBTQ uh, agenda and causing social upheaval. He's not the one that's putting in people that are going to socialize everything and radicalize it. That's not God. Do you ever consider the possibility that actually the Democrat presidents or like Biden, for example, aren't doing any of those things. They're not trying to socialize the country. Biden has nothing to do with Roe v. Wade. That is the law of the land right now. And the Supreme Court has the ability to reverse it. But that's not what Biden is doing at this moment. I honestly have no idea where this dude's head is at that he would come at this situation from that perspective. I mean, this is pure propaganda from beginning to end. He, he can't believe what he's saying, can he? Honestly, like, do you think that he really believes what he's saying right now? Or does he realize that he's full of it? I mean, it's an age-old question. Is the televangelist a scam artist? Or do they believe their own lies? It's hard to know. I think people that practice faith healing, like Kenneth Copeland, for example, they know. They know they're lying. They know they're full of it. I don't think every televangelist is like that, though. I don't think that they all are. I'm not as cynical about all of them like that. Like, this guy is definitely a televangelist, and he's pretty high up there. But I'm not sure how cynical I am about him yet. Let's watch the next clip and see if my cynicism goes up for this. The next one came out mid-January 2022. Reasonably new. I tell you, partnership in the gospel is the greatest thing you can do. When we get to heaven, I can guarantee you there's not a single one of you that's going to be saying, I wish you hadn't have encouraged me to give so much and that I'd have got my fifth flat screen TV and that I would have had more jewels and fancier clothes and a nicer car. All that stuff will be gone. It's only what you invest in the kingdom that is going to benefit you for eternity. You're going to come up to me and hug my neck and kiss me and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for getting that money out of my pocket. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, I think my cynicism is starting to go up for this guy. I can't believe that even came out of his mouth. I truly don't know how he still has an audience to listen to him in the first place. But people believe this guy. They buy it. They eat this up. They agree with him. You know what this reminds me of, actually? Uh, do you guys remember forever ago, Kenneth Copeland was having a conversation with a guy named Jesse Duplantis. Let me find that conversation. Hang on. Shoot, I'm trying to find the clip. Let me just search Kenneth Copeland in my clips here. You know what I'll do? Let's just kind of go through my Copeland clips real fast. To those critics that say that a preacher should not be living a life of luxury, what is your response to that? Okay, let me just skim through them really quickly, one after the other, and see if they're, it's one of these. You said that you don't like to... When? When you were on your bus. And the Lord told... So this is a word for, for those that might have the idea. Oh, God, this is where he gives this creepy smile. Oh, my God. That's what I remember about this clip. This is him apologizing for being a creeper. And at the very end, this happens. Amen. Yeah, so that, that, that didn't really help his case. The media said what? <laughs> there are. So what do you mean the eye? And this morning. The time. And the years, years and years ago. Wait, 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 wait. This may be it. No, no, that's not it. Hang on. All you have to do, Jeremy, to get to incur a lot more persecution is buy two airplanes. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> oh, brother. And if, if you want some nasty... So 
Wow, man, I don't have the clip. That's so weird. Well, I'll insert it later. The mess that the airlines are in today, I would have to stop. I'm being very conservative. At least 75 to 80, more like 90% of what we're doing, because you can't get there can't, from here. It's impossible. Right. The, this dope-filled world. Right. And get in an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. That's exactly the And it, it's deadly. And, and it works on you hard. It really does. He had this conversation with Jesse Duplantis. That's who the other guy was, right? This reminds me, what Andrew Womack said here, this reminds me of a line that Jesse Duplantis said recently. So Duplantis is holding this fundraiser with Kenneth Copeland uh, mid-September 2021. They're trying to raise money for God, quote-unquote, you know, for more private jets, basically. And Jesse Duplantis says this on the fundraiser. I honestly believe this, that the reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, when you... Oh, look, there's Kenneth Copeland right there on the right. And Lance Walna. I didn't realize that they were close. If people would call this number <clears throat> and put this victory all over the world on every available voice, mm -hmm. every available outlet, mm -hmm. God, the Father, he would say, Jesus, go get him. Yeah. Because you see, he wants to see us as much as we want to see him. You see what I'm saying? And so what has hindered all these things is, right. uh, 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 is because people are not doing in the financial realm, because we live in an economic world, what God's called them to do. So donate harder if you want Jesus to come back. Jesus won't come back until you send me your money. That's what Andrew Womack just reminded me of. That line right there. That is one of the most underhanded, dirty things that you can do to your audience, in my opinion. Take advantage, fleece them like that, and convince them that their eternal souls will be safe if they send you money. That is evil, dude. That's evil. And look at all these pastors up here with Jesse Duplantis at this fundraiser. Anthony Marillo on the right here, I think. I've covered him a couple times. Hank Kuhneman, Lance Walna. Kenneth Copeland. I think this guy is one of Kenneth Copeland's hype men and, and also son-in-law married to his daughter. I'm not, a, that could be incorrect, so don't take my word for that. And then Jesse Duplantis on the left. All of these people, to some degree, have practiced faith healing and, you know, all of the traditional scams that televangelists practice. It's absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. So anyway, back to Andrew Womack. Uh, in my opinion, he's cut from the same cloth. He said the same things that they've been saying for years. Send me more money if you want Jesus to come back sooner. You'll thank me for pulling that money out of your pocket one day. This one is from mid-March 2022. Check this clip out. I believe climate control is nothing but a ruse of the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, climate fluctuates. No, what he's thinking is weather. He's, it sounds like he's confusing weather and climate. Weather fluctuates. Climate is like the overall picture that we have of the weather patterns that we find on planet Earth. I'm no climate scientist, so take what I say with a grain of salt. All I know is what the experts have told me. I always defer to experts when talking about these issues. But this guy has some interesting ideas on climate. We haven't even gotten there yet. Keep listening. And I've seen right. graphs, graphs on this thing, and they are attributing this to man-made climate change, and they're using this as, I mean, I believe... Wow, dude. Man-made climate change. I thought the Republican Party gave up on that narrative. It started out, climate change isn't real in the first place, with people throwing snowballs around in the Senate chambers to prove that climate change isn't real. You guys remember that? In case we have forgotten, because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it switched to, okay, sure, it's happening, but there's nothing we can do about it. It's not man-made. And I thought that it switched to just climate change is evil and we're not going to talk about it anymore. But it seems to me that he's leaning on the it's not man-made bit or there's nothing that we can do about it bit. Does his audience even require logic? I'm starting to think they don't. 
I'm starting to wonder if they just listen to what he says and they believe it without even processing this critically. Let's take a look at this next clip. Now that we've established how he feels about all of the stupid culture war issues, climate change, and uh, what, what else was it? Uh, the election and all of the other little culture war things, taking money from gullible suckers, that kind of thing. Now that we know where he stands on all that stuff, let's give this a listen and see where he stands on this next culture war issue. LGBT rights. Late May 2021. Check it out. Homosexuals have like uh, three times as much as heterosexuals and then you go into transgender and it just continues to go up it's mm. a very destructive lifestyle yeah. you have a shorter life expectancy they have 20 years less that the homosexual lives than a uh, heterosexual and you know uh, cigarettes take an average of seven years off of a person's life so wow. homosexuality is three times worse than smoking we ought to put a, a label across their forehead this could be <laughs> hazardous to your health you know evil man absolutely evil this guy thought that joke was absolutely hilarious. Look at this grin on his face. Is that true? No. No, it's not true. This is something that I heard, I think last week I talked about a similar argument from somebody named Rick Scarborough, calls himself a Christocrat. He said something really similar about the you know tobacco industry and LGBT lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. So I, I went ahead and researched this heavily. I spent some time looking into it to see if this actually is true or not. And as a matter of fact, it's not true. He's completely warping the information around to make it into something that it's not. I found a couple of pretty reputable news sources on this subject and a scientific study to talk about this. It does homosexual activity shorten life? And the bottom line here is no. When you correct for deaths in areas where anti-LGBT sentiment is high, when you correct for bullying and, you know, all of the other things, the gap virtually closes. And when you account for HIV and recognize the fact that it, it has done untold damage to an innocent community of people, there is no gap. Pretty much the bottom line here is Republicans used HIV as a culture war issue to hurt people. They refused to fund research to curing it for years, decades even. And they encouraged its spread among the gay community. They celebrated it. They threw parties and they made a big deal wearing masks anytime they were around a member of the LGBT community because they didn't want to catch it from them. Mistreated them terribly, bullied them, uh, the whole nine yards. And what do you think that does to somebody's psyche when they're in that type of situation? It destroys them emotionally. Is being LGBT more dangerous than being straight? Yeah, I guess you could say it is. Because of you. Because of what you have done to the community. Because what you've done to the people. Because of the bullying and the hatred and the refusal to fund research to save people's lives. Yeah, it is more dangerous because of you. That's the bottom line. That's why it happened. So thank you, Andrew Womack, for making everyone's lives more miserable. So that brings us to our next clip. This one came out early April 2022. He was talking to his audience, and he had something weird to say. So check this out. We decided that we were going to take Colorado back. Colorado is a very liberal place, and so We've got a thing in place, and uh, during the last election cycle, we started with the school boards, and we singled out five districts in Colorado, and we put out 417,000 voter guides. The GOP got in cent status because we asked, how do you feel about uh, men competing in women's sports? You know... What he's talking about right now is getting people out there to either vote or run for office. If you guys don't run for office or you guys don't get out there and vote, he'll be voting whether you're out there doing it or not. He will put people on the campaign trail to run for office whether you're doing that or not. If you are capable of it, you need to get out there and run for office and vote. Vote like your life depends on it because... 
there are absolutely some people out there whose lives do depend on you getting out there and voting. Seriously, just keep listening. The GOP got in sense status because we asked, how do you feel about uh, men competing in women's sports? What do you think about critical race theory? And they did not want those things to be public. Maybe because it's obviously biased culture war BS. We asked all of the candidates, Democrat and Republic, and we put out these voter guides, and out of 178 people that we were supporting, we got, I think it, I, I may get this wrong, but it was somewhere around 78 or 80 of them elected. So according to Andrew Womack, he got 178 people to run for office, and 70 or 80 of them won their elections. I, You know, these are his figures. I don't know if that's accurate or not. But even if he got one of them elected, that is one Andrew Womack follower in a, an elected position now. One guy is too many for somebody who holds beliefs like this. One too many. I sent a spy into our public school system. A spy, you say? Go on. To check out what the books are. And I got a list of, I think it was 54 books in the Woodland Park school system. And this is a small place, 7,000 people in the community. And there's 54 homosexual books that we know of. And I got a list of that. And I've got people that are on my staff that go to every school board meeting. And as soon as we get them looked at so that we can defend what we're saying, we're going to stand up in the school board. Dude is literally trying to get books taken out of schools. How does he defend this? I thought this was the freedom of speech crowd. What happened to that? What happened to freedom of speech and freedom of expression? Only when it's convenient for them and no other time. We also ran and we now have a number of our Karis graduates that are on school board and we've got Christians in places and praise God, we're seeing things change. So incredibly heartbreaking that we have people like this putting people into office. This guy has some weird, deep-seated problem with the LGBT community, and I genuinely do not get it. I really don't. He's from an older generation. This is long before anybody could even imagine gay people getting married. Like, people from this generation didn't even see that one coming because it was so completely outside the Overton window when they were younger. And then it just kind of snuck up on them in their eyes. They feel like it just snuck up on them all of a sudden around 2015 gay marriage is legal boom just like that and it just eats them up inside i just do not get it i don't get it and now they're putting everything they have every spare penny every spare moment of their lives is going into regressing going backwards reversing progress in the u.s now they probably aren't going to be able to reverse progress on gay marriage i seriously doubt they're going to erase that but out of spite they will do everything they can to reverse progress everywhere else we gotta fight this stuff man we gotta fight this stuff we gotta get out there and vote we gotta get out there and campaign for people if we aren't running ourselves phone bank for some official in your area some candidate you gotta do it because if you don't this guy will be out there doing it in your place.